Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Alex and today I will show you how you can change your log format to JSON using Logback and Spring Boot. Logging in JSON can be quite helpful if you want to analyze your logs, for example, if you're sending them to AWS, CloudWatch or the like. That makes it much easier. It's of course much more verbose, but it makes it easier to automatically chunk the data that you want to see. So without further ado, let's code. So we are in the IDE and as usual, we just check our build file. I'm using Spring Boot 242 and the dependencies that we use for this tutorial are these. So we're using Jackson for the JSON mapping and then we use these two dependencies, Lockback JSON Classic and Lockback Jackson. Uh, and that's pretty much it. There will be just very little code today actually. Okay, let's see the application. So just for reference, if we start the application, what we see is this one. This is what the log file usually looks like, right? So that's nice. It's a very compact way of showing information, but we want to go to JSON. So the way to do this is by providing um, a configuration file for logback. And this file is called logback string XML. It would be fine if we just call it logback.xml, but it's really advised by the Spring team that you call it logback-spring.xml. All right, let's start. So this is not gonna be a full tutorial on login configuration, so I just start typing a bit of stuff and then explain the bits one by one. All right, so this is the entire configuration. So let's just take a quick look at what we've done here. So as usual, we need an appender and I'm just appending everything to the console right now, but of course you could also append to a file if, if you need that. And then the layout and the JSON format are really what it's all about. So we provide the JSON layout that's coming from one of the dependencies and then the Jackson JSON format that's coming from the other one. Um, I'm using the default option of pretty printing false. We'll see in a bit what that actually changes. And then what we can do next is also provide our own timestamp format. That's quite helpful. Um, and appending a line separator. I set this to false, which is the default as well. We're going to see what this is also in a second. And we set the root level to info for the console logger. And that pretty much is it. So now let's run the application and see what has changed. This is the application. So. What we can see here is already that it has worked. This is apparently uh, JSON and it's a very long line. <laughs> it's hard to read. Um, this, is, this can be helpful for automated analysis, analysis of, the, of the log, but that doesn't really help us right here. So let's just change that to make it a little bit more nicer. And this is what the pretty print option is for. We can say pretty print and if we now run the application again, we can see that looks much nicer. So we now, each lock record is a dedicated JSON object. It has a timestamp, the level, like all the parameters that we would expect. We can of course chuck in our own message there if we want it, if we get a reference to a logger and then just lock something ourselves. And the final bit that we can change is this one. You can see that the objects are now very close together. That's really not a big issue. It's just some it just looks nicer. So if I just change this to true and go back to the application and run it one more time, we can see now that there is a line between these objects which make them much nicer. So as I said, this is, this is quite nice if you want to do some automated stuff on the logs, but apparently it's a much more verbose format. So you have to just choose whenever you want to do this. If you want to see a full tutorial on logging, especially logback and Spring Boot, consider subscribing. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.